Hello! Today I'm going to be going over how Oracle's false promise actually works. I'm not going to be going over every aspect of this spell, only the parts of it that I think are the most misunderstood or interesting. Shout out to these people who suggested this. If you have any suggestions for something you want me to cover, let me know. As always, I hope you learn something new with me. False Promise is arguably one of the strongest single target saves, which also pierces spell immunity. This means you can save your teammates from a strong stun or disable like Beastmaster Roar or Batrider Lasso, both of which also go through spell immunity. Or you can throw it on a teammate if they're almost dead, then spam them with some heals hoping they heal enough to live. But how exactly does the damage and healing received work with False Promise? One might think it's indicated by this orb that floats above the target and is sometimes glowing and fiery red. Or you might think that this orb is an indication that the target will live or die. Or maybe the orb is just to make the spell look cool. I wouldn't blame you for thinking any of these things because there's no information about it in game. And the wiki states, If the accumulated damage exceeds the accumulated heal, the orb above the target glows red and emits fire indicating it will receive damage, when in fact that isn't exactly true, but more on that later. The way False Promise works is that at the end of the duration, every heal that the target received is doubled, and during the duration of False Promise, the spell is keeping track of every damage instance the target would take and keeps them in order. Once False Promise ends, the spell checks to see if the sum of damage received is greater than the sum of healing received. If the sum of damage is greater than healing, the target is damaged. If the sum of healing is greater than damage, the target is healed. That was a pretty brief explanation, and I can see that it still might have been confusing, so I think the best way to fully understand this is with some examples. I've set up an example of when the overall healing that the target receives is greater than the overall damage they receive. In this example, Ursa is brought fairly low, then gets False Promise cast on him. Ursa is then hit with a level 1 shuriken, followed by a level 1 dragon slave. Ursa then uses a fairy fire. At the end of the duration, False Promise looks at all of the heals and damage instances and determines if Ursa should heal or get damaged. Let's do the same. First, we look at the heals. In this case, the level 1 Ursa has 3.0 natural health regen per second. Oracle has level 3 false promise, so the duration is 10. This means that from Ursa's natural health regen alone, Ursa will heal for 30 by the end of false promise. Next, Ursa used a fairy fire, which heals for 85. The sum of this healing is 115. But remember, we take the sum and double it because of the 100% heal amp that False Promise provides. So the sum of all healing now becomes 230. Now we'll look at the damage Ursa received during False Promise, which should be pretty simple. First, Ursa got hit by a level 1 shuriken, which does 80 magic damage, but is reduced to 60 because of Ursa's magic resistance of 25%. Next, Ursa got hit by a level 1 Dragon Slave, which does 85 magic damage, but again is reduced by magic resistance to 63.75, which will round up to 64. Now we see that there are two damage instances to account for. We can start subtracting the amount of damage in each instance from our overall heal sum, making sure we do it in the order that the damage instances were taken. This is because whoever's damage instance dealt the killing blow on the false promised unit is rewarded with the kill. This can be the first, last, or any instance in between. First, we subtract the shuriken damage of 60 from 230, which leaves 170. Next, we subtract the dragon slave damage of 64 from 170, which leaves 106. Now we've accounted for all damage instances and see that we still have 106 healing left over. This means that the overall healing received from False Promise was more than the overall damage received, so when False Promise ends, Ursa is healed for the remainder of healing, 106. Hopefully that all made sense, but it still didn't cover everything. 
So now let's take a look at a similar example, but this time the overall damage will be more than the overall healing. The setup is the same, except this time Ursa is starting with less health. Ursa starts out getting False Promise cast on him, then is hit with a level 1 Shuriken, then a level 1 Dragon Slave. Ursa uses a Fairy Fire, and this time is hit with two more Dragon Slaves, and finally one more Shuriken. Now let's go through the same process as before and see what the results are. First, we'll look at the healing received. This will be very easy because it's the exact same as last time, which means Ursa got a total healing of 230. Now for the damage received. This starts out the same as last time as well, with one shuriken and one dragon slave. But this time, there were two more dragon slaves, followed by one more shuriken. Now, let's calculate the values and figure out Ursa's fate. We start by subtracting the damage from the first shuriken, then the first dragon slave, then two more dragon slaves, and now let's pause here and take a look at a couple of things. At this point, the total healing that Ursa received has depleted and we're left with negative 22, and still one damage instance to account for. This means that since Lena's damage instance is the one that brought Ursa's health to zero, Lena will be rewarded with the kill. And just to clarify, negative 22 is not Ursa's health. It's the sum of all healing received during False Promise. It's negative, so False Promise will apply damage instead of a heal at the end of the duration. Now, let's apply that last damage instance from the last shuriken, and that leaves Ursa with negative 82 HP. So Ursa dies with a fiery red orb above him. So, does the red orb mean that the target will actually die? No, it does not. The orb turns to this fiery red if False Promise unit's health reaches zero. But, seeing the fiery red orb doesn't always mean the targeted hero will die, and it's really all thanks to the 100% heal amp. The orb turns to this fiery red if the target's health reaches zero during the False Promise duration, but the orb does not take into account the 100% heal amp applied at the end that can bring the target's health above zero, allowing the unit to live. If the target was not healed enough, they will die. A unit at negative 200 health that gets healed for 150 will still be at negative 50 before the spell amp, causing the orb to be red. Once the spell finishes, the amp will be applied and they'll survive with 100 HP. Also, as seen here, the orb can go back and forth between fiery red to normal. It all just depends on the damage and healing that has been received. That was a lot of information, and to be honest, in a normal game, you might not really need to think about all of that stuff, especially in the middle of a teamfight. You're usually safe with just applying your heals on a teammate like usual and judging their overall heal and damage intake based on feeling. But knowing that a teammate with a red fiery orb above them isn't just a lost cause could be the difference between giving them a little more healing to ensure they live, or ignoring them and having them die when False Promise ends. Thanks for all the support on the recent videos. It's been very inspiring and motivating to see all of that support and all of the nice comments. So I definitely plan on making more of this stuff. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned something new with me.